Hey guys, it is Carl Brown for GuitarLessons365.com. I have a great one from Metallica today off the uh, Black Album. We're gonna learn how to do Don't Tread On Me. This one's a lot of fun to play. That riff, that main... <laughs> It just grooves. It's rocks. It's a killer riff. So it's got a lot of cool riffs in this one. So uh, I'm gonna go through the whole song, all the riffs, all the solos, fills, you name it. We're gonna cover it. All right. Before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and ring that notification bell so you'll know when I release a new video. And it really helps me out when you guys like the videos and comment on them and all that good stuff. And uh, please check out my Guitar Academy. You'll you'll see a link in the description below. That link will give you a free seven day trial um, just to check out my Guitar Academy and. Uh, see what you think of it. Uh, my Guitar Academy is where all my guitar courses are, covering everything from technique courses on alternate picking, economy picking, sweep picking, everything, uh, to complete beginner courses, to courses on improvisation and ear training and theory, uh, even a complete guitar tone course. So uh, please go over there and check it out. All right, so let's get to the tune. We are in standard tuning. Um, <laughs> Metallica once again proving you do not need to tune down to absolutely rock. So we're going to start here. We've got a couple of things going on here. Um, we have the rhythm guitar part in the intro, and then we have a melody that's actually doubled an octave lower. So I'm going to show you both of that. You can play it as an octave as you want, but uh, Kirk Hammett usually does just the high one he's playing it live. Uh, but I'll show you both of those parts. So we have just the rhythm underneath that though. In the beginning, it looks like this. So that's just starting on the E power chords. One, two, three. Then uh, two hits where you, you actually kill it. So it's like one, two, three, let that ring out. Then one, two. Again. And then we start doing the chorus. Same riff there. And then this. You see right there, I did that same th three hits. Let it ring and then went to the so the second, the two hits after that yeah. is over at the B power chord off the second fret of the A string. So we have this. All right, and then take it over to the G power chord off the third fret of the low E string. So that's where you do the three hits this time. One, two, three. And then jump up here to the fifth fret power chord at the, off the A string, the D power chord for those two hits. And then we do one of those power chords where we put the fifth in the bass. So we're gonna, uh, we have the C power chord is what it really is. Third fret there on the A string, fifth fret on the D, but you're gonna add the third fret on the low E in there as well. And then a couple of hits and let it ring out. So all together that rhythm part. All right, so now let me show you uh, the high line in this. It's not really a harmony, it's just an octave, but we have this. A couple of those in there might not sound exactly like, because it sounds an octave lower more on the recording. We're gonna take care of that part in a second. But this is what he does live. So we have this. You hit the, uh, the E there at the seventh fret of the A string uh, three times. Then go over to the ninth fret on the G. Hit that three times. And then go six on the G, seven on the D, seven on the A. All right, now from there, we're gonna hit that again three times on the A to start the new melody. So that's that ninth fret on the G again, three times, slide up to 11, then play eight, 
over to 9 on the D. So, so far we have this. All right, from there we have this. So that part might not sound right because you're probably hearing that more, the octave lower, but we're, like I said, we're going to take care of that. So we have this, the seventh fret there on the G string three times, and then three times on that eighth fret on the B. And then we have a half step bend at the seventh fret on the B and release. Then over to seven on the G and seven on the D. And then go down to the fifth fret on the D string. Hit that three times. And we have this. So, so that's five on the G string three times. Then four. Slide to the uh, ninth fret. So that whole high part. All right, now, like I said before, he does that live, but on the recording, that is doubled an octave lower, and it looks like this. All right, so we, we're starting with the low E string, hit three times, and then the seventh fret there on the A string, three times, and then four. Over to five on the low E, and then the open E. Let's try this. All right, then we start over again with the three hits on the low E. And then, as we did in the high line, so that's going to be three times at the seventh fret on the, the, the A, slide to nine, down to six, and then down to seven on the low E. All together so far. All right, and now we get to this fifth fret on the A string. That's when you hear that note, you're hearing that. So we have this fifth fret. Um, we're getting kind of palm muted, of course. Um, three times. Over to the fifth fret on the D. And then that fourth fret on the on the, G's, on the D string, I'm sorry, half step bend and release. Just like going with this. Then over to five on the A, five on the low E. Then take it down to the uh, third fret there on the low E string. And you have that three times and three times on the A string, two on the A. Slide of the so all together for the low harmony, or not a harmony, the low octave part. All right, now we get towards the main riff of the of the, and there's two rhythms going on here. Um, uh, so I'll play like the lower rhythm that is going on underneath the main riff first. So it looks like this. Then it goes into the, then it's, they play the same riff after that. So it's the same as the beginning of this track first. And when the other guitar is playing the main riff, so that Hetfield usually does that live, underneath that, Kirk will do this. All so that's, you don't let any of these rings. So heavily palm muted, it's so three hits on the low E power chord. Then you have the F power chord real quick at the first fret of the low E string, and then 
two more hits on the low E. So we have this. Then you're going to play the low F power chord one time, and then the um, E power chord three times. So we have this. So all together we have this. And then once again we're going to end it with this one hit on the F power chord with two hits on the E power chord. So that's the whole riff there. So we have this all together. You repeat it. All right, so that is the riff that's going on underneath that main riff. Um, now the main riff itself, like I said, it's a very killer riff. I'm gonna play that here. And then after that um, part I just played is played twice. The other, both guitars coming in uh, playing the main riff. So we have this. All right, so we have this. So you're gonna hit that low E power chord three times. Then what you do is you quickly slide from the B flat power chord, which is at the first set of the A string. It's kind of really just a, a ghost note anyway. And you're sliding into the second fret. So that's the main chord you hear. So you're just kind of sliding into the second fret power chord, the B power chord. Then you go back and play the F power chord off the first fret of the low E string. So you pick that once, and then the E power chord twice, heavily muted, and then back to the slide end of the B. So it is. Then back. So it is. So you can see that that those parts that we were matching up. that we were matching up with the riff that's going on underneath it. And you can kind of tell you how to start, what to do before that slide each time. It's like. So that you can see what's going on there. So we know that previous riff, that's why I kind of did that first. So we have this drum, play this. It's got a different ending to it. So do that riff that we did earlier, and then the first three times hits to it, you're gonna just do that after it. So we have this. Just like that. And then, so it's just that previous riff with just those slides. So that, and then the last time, we have this, which is the F power chord, E power chord, back to the F. Up to the G power chord of the third fret, and back to the F. So, and that's not as palm music. Let that ring more. So all together for that main riff. Repeat. So after you do that, the whole band's, you know, both of them are coming in and, and cranking on that. We have this little melody on top. A little bit of a wah pedal on there too, but I'll, I'll save my wah pedal action for a little later. So we have this. Uh, so that's just a, a bend at the 11th fret on the G. Release, pick 11, and then down to 9. And then you slide up to 11, and then back down to 9. And that's just the melody. You're, All right, and then from there we get to the verse, and it sounds like this. And it go 
goes back to the main riff in this little transition thing. So that verse, pretty simple. We're just hitting that E power chord three times, let it ring, and then just kind of like we did earlier, then two hits with it muted. And then we start going up chromatically. So we start with the low E, with the low E, let it ring, and then those two hits now are at the first fret. And then you take the three hits up at the second fret, then the two hits up at the third, the three hits at the fourth, and then what you do here at the fifth, you hit it once, and then there's a little uh, riff they'll do there. So we have this, you're hammering on six to seven on the A, the low E, sorry. Over to five on the A, back to that seven on the, the low E string. So just think of it, we start it with just the, so you just start it with those, those hits, like a one, two, three, then one, two. And now what you start doing from there is you do the one, two, three on the open E, then the one, two at the first fret, and then move up a fret to do the one, two, three, then I'll move up a fret to do the one, two. So every time you're doing each one of those, either the three or the twos, you're just moving up a fret each time. So this first starts on E without moving. Now we go. And then we have this, uh, the main riff one time with this little transition riff that takes us to the chorus. It looks like this. All right, so that right there, so that's the main riff. So you've already done that. And then uh, the little transition riff is this. So I'm doing that down, down, up, down on the low E string, then the first fret power chord, then back to the E a couple times. So, all right, and then we do that again. Now with the power chord at the third fret, though. So. Then we did that the fifth fret. And then after you get up to the fifth fret, you're just gonna go. So that's just playing, pulling off three, six to the open string, then five to the open string, and then three. All right, now we get to the chorus, which has a little overdub in it that they don't do live, but I'll show you how to play the overdub in a second. So let me just show the chords first. We have this. All right, so that right there, uh, we had this. So we had this couple hits on the E, the E F power chord, and then back down to the E. A couple times and let it ring. And that's when you'll hear that first fill. I'll take care of that in a second. So and then again. And then up to the G power chord. Third fret off the low E string, and then up to the fifth fret power chord off the A string. And then there's another little fill there. And then we're down to the G power chord again. And then what you do from there is you just chromatically hit each four, five, six. So we have this all together. Repeating here. So 
So after two times there, I'm gonna end this before I show the fills. We have this. It's just that kind of riff that we started doing earlier, that little transition riff, but just the first couple of chords of it. So it's just up to the, the third fret power chord. And then you're back to the, the, the main riff of, of the song again um, that, with that same melody. So things just kind of start repeating from there. So, um, so that's the, really the chords underneath the, the, sol, the, uh, the chorus. But we have that little, I'll play the chords now and then I'll throw in those little fills so you'll, you'll kind of know where they are. So let's just... So that first fill is sliding from the seventh fret on the D up to nine. Pick that nine again, then over to nine on the G. Like I said, they don't do this live. They just play the chords, both of them together. So, but that does happen on the album. So if you have two guitarists, one can be jumping, on, jumping up and grabbing these fills while continuing to play the rest of the riff, like uh, James does. And then the other fill is when we're so that's coming. We need to let those E's ring. And the next one comes when we get to that D power chord. And that's the same lick, but just basically two frets lower. So that's the fifth fret on the D. Slide to seven. Pick the seven again. Over to seven on G. All right, then we're back to the main riff with that same melody over it, and back to the same verse, same um, uh, main riff and transition riff, and then into the chorus. Um, so the, the only difference with this chorus, the second time you hear the chorus, it has a different ending to it. It has a different ending where it goes, before, we just went, stopped, went there, and went back to the main riff. But now the ending to the chorus, everything up leading it to it is the same with. So that takes us into the solo. So that what I did there was this, that same ending to the chorus we had before. Then I'm going to go back and hit that G power chord and let it ring for a second. And then you go to the B flat power chord at the first fret of the A string. Back to that G power chord with the low E, and then the F. Don't try it all day. All right, and then we get to the solo. So before I play Kirk's solo, I'm gonna show you guys uh, James' parts underneath it. Um, uh, so it starts with kind of the main riff again, played, and then um, he goes into kind of a, a variation a little bit of the uh, verse riff. So it looks like this. So um, that's going on underneath the solo. So that's that main riff done four times, and then pretty much uh, the, kind of the, just the verse. And that same little ending there. Um, and then uh, we, um, we go up to this little, little cool groove riff that happens after the solo. But that's after the solo. So let's check out the solo now. So I'm going to play through Kirk's, Sam, uh, Kirk's uh, solo for you. So I'm going to kick in the wah pedal, of course. And um, uh, we will check it out. So I'm going to play through it real quick. And then I'll show you how to play it note for note. So here we go. <laughs>
All right, cool stuff. So um, we're gonna start here. I'll take all this stuff off. You know I'm using a wah pedal, so you don't, you don't need me doing that, the whole, whole thing. So we're gonna start with this little. So what he's doing there is he's doing a, a trill from the, uh, you're gonna play the 12th fret on the G string, then pull off to the open G. And I just trill between those, and then, and then 11, and then the open string, like a trill. So he's rotating. Just rotating between those two. Now, uh, you know, you can, it's a good idea to kind of mute the strings around it. So you'll see when I'm doing this, I'm muting the B string there with my um, middle finger, and I'm just kind of leaning my pick into the D string. So, all right, so um, th that'll just kind of keep the surrounding strings quiet while you're doing that stuff. And then, so it's kind of sliding into 12 on the B, then 11, 10. Next phrase. So that's at the 15th fret there on the B string. Uh, whole step in. And then 12 on the high E. Then 15, 12 on the B. So. Into a bend at the 14th fret there on the G. And then back up, 12 on the B, 12 on the high E string. So it is with us. And then come back down, 15, 12 on the B string. And then it's kind of a bend and release of the 14th on the G. Pull off to 12, over to 14 on the D. And then you pick the double stop here, the 14th fret on the G string and the B together. Pull off to the, the 12th on the G and the B over to 14 a couple times on the D. So we have this. All right, next phrase looks like this. So that first one's kind of a repeated thing. We're gonna do a bend in the 14th fret on the G string. Over to the 12 on the B. Over to the 12 on the G. Then you'll play the double stops again at the 14th fret on the G and the B. And kind of just pull them down a little bit. Like this. So there we go, so we have this. And then we're gonna do this. So that's gonna be a, a bend, a whole step bend first on the 14th fret on the G. Back to that 12 on the B, and then a kind of a like a two-step bend on the on the 14th fret. Down to the 12 on the G. So we have this. So all together so far. Then repeat that. All right, and then we get to this. So then going up to that bend, we're gonna play this 12, 14, into 15, into a bend. And then what you do it first is, um, first I'll get the notes down. We have 14, 15, 14, 12 on the high E and the B. And you gotta do this like, So we'll just kind of like click 14, I'm sorry, 15, then 14, and then go back back to the 15 and then pull off, pull off down all three. Then the same thing on the beat. And then you play 14, 12 on the G, to 14 on the D, and then we start this, which is just that double stop there at the 14th fret on the G and the B, down to the 12s on the G and the B. 
down to the 14 on the D. So you do that three times. And you're going to end it with two hits on that last note instead of just one. So. All right, and now we get to this kind of uh, symmetrical lick, um, which sounds chaotic and crazy, but it's pretty easy to understand um, how he's actually doing it. Um, so it looks like this. So what is going on there is it's just kind of, he's taking a pattern. So in this case, just a two note pattern. Seven. We're playing 17 down to 12. So you're gonna take that, it's, we can do it really as just a four note lick. We're gonna play, pull off 17 to 12, then go over on the high E, then go over to 17 on the B, and then back to 12 on the high E. So if, And then all you gotta do is do the same thing now starting from the B string. So just kind of the, the tuning differences between the strings, especially here, on that between the, the G and the B string, gives it kind of that really kind of interesting kind of out of the key sound that you know players like Eddie Van Halen kind of really kind of patented. So it's like this. And then from there, you play 17, 12 on the A, down to 10. And then over to the uh, 12th fret on the low E string, then back to 10 on the A. Then you're going to slide 12 to 14 on the A. And then you're going to end it with 12 on the G, 14 on the D. So in that little section. All right, and then we have this little section. So he's just throwing all sorts of stuff at us there. So this right here, it's kind of just like a legato lick. We're playing nine on the G, hammer on 12, pull back off to nine, and then, and then play 10 on the D, pull off to nine, and then hammer back on that 10. So we have this. So you just kind of practice, it's like a six note lick. So he does that, and then he takes everything up one fret. So this. And then back down to the ninth fret. Back to the 10. So he's just kind of going back and forth twice. So. So from there, we're going to some more of those double stops. So back to the double stops with the 14 on the G and the B together. And then down to the 12 on the G and the B, over to 14 on the D. So you're gonna do that twice. And then move everything up one fret and repeat it twice again. And then we have this, sorry. So that's going to be 12 on the B, 14 on the high E, then 15 on the B. Then back to 12 on the high E, down to 14 on, I'm sorry, 12 on the B. My numbers are all messed up today. So it's, So after you get that little lick, we're gonna do some unison bends. So we're play the 12th fret on the high E string and the 15th on the B, and you're gonna be bending up that 15th on the B a whole step to match the note on the high E. So you're gonna do that at 12th fret, then 13, and 14, and then jump for the end of the solo, a, a bend at the 22nd fret on the high E.
All right. Now, after the solo, we have this kind of, I just call it the groove section. It looks like this. All right, so that is just kind of the same riff that we did earlier. One, three, five. And that's just going to pull them off two to, oh, to six to zero, then hit the low E, and then five to zero, and then start the riff over again. So this. And then do the riff again, but now we're going to do a little bit more pull offs. And then back to the riff again. So that pull off was six, five, three, like we did earlier, just straight through. Now getting back to the chorus, we just gotta do that riff up to the third fret there, uh, the third, the G power chord. And then we're back to the chorus riff done one time. And then we go back to the verse riff played through one time. Kind of really, uh, um, there's some fills over that. It's gonna, we have this kind of stuff going over it. So it's kind of more of the same stuff you did earlier, just kind of a bend at the 14th on the G, release down to 12, and then some bends at the 15th on the B. And then some more of that double stop stuff, just that's 14s, down to 12, down to 14 on the D, and down to the 14s again. And he ends it with a double stop to the 12. So just kind of mess around with that, it's all you really And so the, then the chorus riff goes um, a couple of times through, and then we basically have that same ending of the chorus. We play the chorus riff through twice. And that same ending that we gave the chorus before when we went, were going into the solo, it's the same thing that ends the song. So, so we have this. So it's the same thing there that we did earlier. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. It is a classic off the black album, um, and you know it just simply rocks. It's really fun to play. It's got really cool grooves to it and a cool solo. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for GuitarLessons365.com.